I want you to turn with me, please, this morning to the Psalms. And we're in Psalm 40, the book of Psalms. And we're in Psalm 40. Verse 13, we read, Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, Aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. There are dark distressing and very much depressing circumstances and situations that can leave the child of God feeling so alone and feeling abandoned. And a Christian can find themselves like that, you know. Christians do feel and find themselves in dark places. And Christians do face distressing times. And Christians can endure the very dark night of depression. And don't tell me they don't. Leaving them so alone and so abandoned. And it's not because they're less spiritual either. It's not because they're less spiritual this morning that Christians find themselves in that dark, difficult, distressing, depressing place. Because, mind you, many of the great men of God found themselves there. Do you remember what the psalmist cried in Psalm 10, verse 1? Why hidest thou thyself, O Lord? Why standest thou afar off in the time of trouble? And mind you, the psalmist who penned that words and who penned those words, friend, was a man after God's own heart. Oh, you know, friends, Christians, God's people can find themselves in a very dark and dismal place, feeling all alone. You know, the great men of God 
found themselves there. I'll tell you one man who found himself there. He was William Cooper. And William Cooper penned that lovely hymn, There is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath its flood, lose all its guilty stains. Ah, but there was one night William Cooper was so low and was so alone that he headed for the Thames River to end it all. And as he headed to the Thames River, all of a sudden a thick fog came down, and Cowper couldn't find the Thames. And after three hours, three hours, of blind wandering in the fog, trying to find his way to the Thames. And when the fog lifted, he was back on his front doorstep again. And as a result of that very experience, he penned those words. God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. And child of God, listen. You know nothing of this darkness and distress and depression and loneliness and grief and sorrow unless you're in it. You only think you know who. Until you're in it, you know. And let me say this this morning. It's an awful burden to bear. And it's an awful cross to carry. Why? I'll tell you why. There's many secret and silent tears that are shed that nobody sees. There are many heavy hearts that break that nobody feels. And there are many who suffer the mental strain that nobody knows. And I wonder this morning, as the Lord has laid this message upon my heart, I wonder, is there someone And life's tough this morning. You're in that dark place, brother. You're in that difficult situation, sister. Nobody else knows about the loneliness that you're enduring. Nobody knows about the long nights where sleep won't come. Oh, now there's a lot of God's people can find themselves there, you know. Even the great preacher C.H. Spurgeon used to be so low that there was many a Lord's Day morning he thought he would never enter his pulpit again. Wonder is there someone here and you're suffering from an inner loneliness? You feel alone this morning. And you've shed many silent tears that nobody sees. And perhaps your heart is breaking that nobody else feels. And you're enduring a mental strain that nobody else knows. I want to bring you God's message this morning. God makes no mistake as far as His messages are concerned. And the Lord has burned a wee text upon my heart just for your heart, just for your mind. And that text is found in that last verse of of Psalm 40. And this is the text this morning. If 
you're feeling low and you're feeling lonely and you feel abandoned and your heart is breaking and your mind is suffering and you're shedding silent tears. Here's the text this morning. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. That's the text this morning. Because no matter how low I may find myself, yet the Lord thinketh of, upon me. No matter how discouraged I may come, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. And maybe this morning, child of God, your heart is breaking. And you do feel alone and abandoned this morning. Friend, it's through those times faith can look up and say, Yet the Lord thinketh. He thinketh upon me. I want you to watch the wording. It doesn't say the Lord thinketh of me. He thinketh upon me. He thinketh upon me. And you know, no matter how down or discouraged you may be, yet the Lord thinketh. He thinketh upon me. Isn't that a lovely thought, child of God, that you and I occupy God's thoughts? Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. He's not thinking of you, child of God. He's thinking upon you. And he's thinking upon me. If I look down on you this morning and say I'm thinking of William and Karen or I'm thinking of Trevor and Alliston or, or I'm thinking of Roy and Elaine or I'm thinking of Samuel John down the back there, my goodness, all I can do is think of you. I can't think upon you at the same time. Ah, but the Lord thinketh upon us. I want you to notice, first of all, the preciseness of God's thoughts because the text begins with this one word, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You know that word, yet's a great word. What that word means this morning, that there's never a moment, there's never a second, that the Lord doesn't think upon us. That word, yet, child of God, whether it's through sunshine or shadow, yet, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You know, child of God, this morning, do you realize that the that before you were even born, the Lord thought upon you. Do you realize, child of God, before I was born, the Lord thought upon me? And I'll tell you this, before I was even conceived in my mother's womb, the Lord thought upon me. Because Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. Oh, you know, was another lovely thought this morning. Before I was even conceived, the Lord was thinking upon me. Even before my granny was born, the Lord was thinking upon me. Does it not bless your heart this morning that the Lord thinketh upon you? My goodness me, dear child of God, redeemed of the Lord this morning, 
Does it not touch your heart that the Lord was thinking upon you before you were even born? He was thinking upon you. He was thinking upon me before life began. And child of God, to think this morning that He was thinking upon us before we were born, before life began, does it not give us the hope and the confidence that He thinketh upon us through life. If the Lord thinketh upon us before we were born, if He thought upon us before life for us began, surely, surely He remains thinking upon us through life. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. And I'll tell you something now, child of God. If He not only was thinking upon us before life, not only will He be thinking upon us through life, I'll tell you something now, He'll be thinking upon us at the end of life. Did the Lord Jesus not say Himself that there is not a sparrow, a sparrow, that falls to the ground that our heavenly Father knoweth not of. Friend, if the Lord sees and knows about every sparrow that falls to the ground, ah, surely His thoughts are far more than us. And the Lord sees every wee sparrow, every sparrow in this world that falls, the Lord knows all about it. Someone once said that the Lord is at the funeral of every sparrow. Oh, I think the Lord's at every deathbed of the sparrow. He thinketh upon us before we began life. He thinketh upon us, friends, through life. And I'll tell you this, He'll think upon us at the end of life, because the psalmist could say, I will fear no evil for for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know what this text doesn't say this morning? It doesn't say, yet the Lord will think of me. Nor does it say, yet the Lord thought of me. It says, yet the Lord thinketh of me. This is present. And as you're sitting in that pew this morning, the Lord thinketh upon you right now. And as I'm standing in this pulpit preaching, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You're in His thoughts, child of God. And I'm in His thoughts. And you know, friends, this morning when life, when life gets tough, you can lift your voice and say, Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. And if there's someone in this meeting this morning and you're struggling with something, you can look up and say, Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. And if there's someone in this meeting this morning and you're facing the future and you fear the future and what the future means and what the future holds and you're worrying about what way is this going to end out, what way is this going to come about, listen, child of God, when you're down in those places fearing, the Bible says, yet, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. And child of God, when nothing makes sense in life, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Oh, I love the authorized version's rendering of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Oh, I think it's the richest rendering of it. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think 
toward you, saith the Lord. He says, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. You know, friends, when Moses was at the Red Sea and everything was out of control and the sea lay before them and the chariots and the horses and the soldiers of Pharaoh was behind them and there was no way out, oh, Moses could look up and say, Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. And you remember when you remember when Daniel was being thrown into the lion's den? And as they marched him to the den, and the lions roaring, waiting for him to come, ah, Daniel could say, even when they, he was being marched to the den, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Dear unsaved friend, now you listen. The dying thief who was on the edge of eternity, who was on the very edge of about to fall over into hell, cried out to the Lord that day and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord Jesus turned and said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And the thief looked upon the cross and saw the Savior suffering, and he saw him bleeding, and he saw him dying. And this is what he said, Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Friend, this morning not saved in this meeting, when they drove the nails through his hands and feet, the Lord was thinking upon you. As they lifted up that cross, yet the Lord was thinking upon you. As he hung there in agony and in shame, yet the Lord was thinking upon you. And as the darkness engulfed the land, Yet the Lord was thinking upon you. Sinner friend, this morning on the cross, you were on his mind. On the cross, he was thinking upon you because it was for you. He went to the cross because there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven to let him in. And maybe this morning, you don't give him a second thought. Let me tell you, he thought and still thinks upon you. Even though you're a sinner, the Lord still thinketh upon you. And if the Lord didn't think upon you, you'd have been in hell right now. You'd have been in hell already. But I want to tell you, he thinks upon you right now, unsafe friend. He's thinking upon you now, and He wants you to come to Him in repentance of your sin. And His thoughts are upon you now, and He longs for you to come to Him for salvation. He's thinking upon you now, unsaved friend, because He wants you to know that I am the door, and if by me if any man enters in, he shall be saved. He's thinking upon you, unsaved friend, that if you don't trust in Him and you don't turn to Him, you'll be in hell. You'll never be in heaven. Maybe you don't give Him one second thought, but I'll tell you, He thinks upon you. And even upon the cross, dying and suffering and bleeding and shame and in agony, He thought upon you because he died for you to save you. And it'll be a terrible thing for you to die without him. It'll be a terrible thing for you to draw your last breath without him. It'll be a terrible time for you to close your eyes without him. On the cross, 
you were on his mind. The preciseness of his thoughts. Secondly, the practicality of his thoughts. Yet, the Lord thinketh upon me. You know, the child of God this morning, listen to me, the Lord just doesn't think upon you for the sake of it. There's numberless, countless reasons as why the Lord thinketh upon me. He thinketh upon me for my provision. The clothes I have on my back, the food we have on our table, it's all because the Lord thinketh upon me. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The Lord thinketh upon me for my provision. I think this morning the wee widow down at Zarephath could say that. Every morning she went back to the bowl there was that wee handful of meal in it. And she went to the cruise, and there it was. There's a wee drop of oil in it. She, she spent it all yesterday, but it was there in the morning. And she could lift up her eyes and say, Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. I'll tell you this, the Lord thinketh upon me as far as protecting me is concerned. You think of Elisha Dothan, surrounded by the Syrian hosts. And you remember what the servant says, Alas, Master, what shall we do? You do nothing, Elisha says, because the Lord is thinking upon us. And you remember how the young servant's eyes were opened, and how the hosts of the Lord was there. The Lord thinketh upon me for my protection. I'll tell you, it was because of the Lord whose thoughts was upon me saved my life in the early hours of the 13th of July, 1986. Well, it wasn't luck that a whole pile of people talk about and said to me about. The night when my father was shot getting out of the car, not only was it bigger than to shoot, try to shoot him, but they left a bomb for, for at the scene for the security personnel to come, and me and my mother and my brother were all there at the scene. And they worked along with my father to keep him stabilized till they got the ambulance, and we didn't know there was a bomb planted just a hundred, a hundred and fifty pounds in an old dustbin. And should have went off at ten to two when we were there, but it didn't go off because the boy sat in the bomb, put the battery in the wrong way. I'll tell you the reason why I survived that, because the Lord was thinking upon me. The Lord thinketh upon me for my provision. You know, the Lord thinketh upon me for my protection. The Lord thinketh upon me for my rejection. Ah, people can reject you, you know. I think we could bring Hagar into the picture. And maybe there's someone here this morning and you feel cheated and rejected by someone. And you remember Hagar went out from Sarah. Sarah ill-treated her. And she came to the place where the angel of the Lord was. And what did Hagar say? Thou God seest me. Oh, she could say, you know, even Sarah despitefully has used me and treated me evil. Ah, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Maybe there's someone here and you feel cheated. And you feel done out and you feel mistreated and rejected. You take this text to your heart this morning. When others mistreat you and reject you, yet 
the Lord thinketh upon me. Do you see the preciseness of his thoughts, the practicality of his thoughts? I'm finished. The preciousness of his thoughts. The Lord, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. That's personal, you know. Why should we allow our minds to suffer with worry and care? When the Lord thinketh upon us, Do you know something this morning, child of God? When my mind and my thoughts are a million miles away from him, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Ah, friend, think of the placing of God's thoughts upon me. Think of the pedigree of God's thoughts. Psalm 139, 17, How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them upon me! How precious are thy thoughts upon me! How great is the sum of them! When my mind this morning is troubled, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. When I'm filled with cares, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Listen, if I have to lose my smile this morning, yet Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. If I have to lose my strength this morning, yet, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Now listen, if the time comes and I lose my senses, yet the Lord thinketh of me. Ah, oh, child of God, I have I even lose my senses. And the main goes, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. His thoughts don't change, you know. Child of God, There's times things go badly. There's times things happen and we don't know why. We've asked a thousand times, why, Lord? And, and the heavens are like brass. We have to bow to the Lord's words in Isaiah 55 and verse 9 where he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as far as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and your thoughts than my thoughts. Whatever life holds, good or bad, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. 
how precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Come what must, come what may, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. May God bless that thought and that message to our hearts this morning for His name's sake. Amen. Our closing hymn.